Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the basic drawing of, um, of an aircraft wing in SOLIDWORKS. And um, for that, there's a, there, there are a few things that uh, you must have prior to starting. I would say you, you need at least your basic dimensions of the wing plan form, uh, which is what we can see in this, in this example. Uh, this is a trapezoid shaped wing uh, with a root cord of 200 millimeters and tip cord of 100. Half span is 650. So we will be using these dimensions as a basis for our CAD modeling. Um, another thing you must have is, well, you gotta have your airfalls picked and I like to use this website for getting airfall data, um, you know, coordinates. And for the root cord of this drawing, we're gonna be using the NACA 2412 for the root uh, and 0012 for the tip. And to get the coordinates, basically you go to this, uh, this button right here, source dead file, and you can just go on and copy this and paste it in a notepad and save it. So the, these text files can be read by Excel and by SolidWorks. So this is why I do this. Uh, do the same for uh, you, the 0012 airfoil. Just copy it and put it in a notepad. Um, next step, once I've done that, uh, I go on to my Excel spreadsheet. And what I do is I turn those non-dimensional coordinates as such to um, a scaled uh, version of the coordinates here. You have for the NECA 2412, you have the XYZ data um, airfalls are usually given as an XY plot simply. And what I do is I multiply these coordinates by a scaling factor. For the root, that would be 200 since we have 200 millimeters. And something I also do is like I change, I switch uh, Y for Z because something that we have is that uh, in aircraft design, usually X is the um, longitudinal axis, so pointing um, uh, pointing backwards in the flow stream. Y is the spanwise uh, coordinate, and Z is the vertical axis uh, pointing to the sky. So what we will have is that the uh, the Y coordinate in the airflow is going to be the Z coordinate in the aircraft system. Um, and once I've done this, um, I, you can see here that I did that for a 24 for the root airfall and for the tip airfall. Um, that gave them real dimensions, uh, basically. Uh, what I do is I save this data again, uh, making the, dis the distinction between the upper part of the wing and the bottom part of the wing. So what I do is that um, I copy this fraction, you know, the positive values that go from 200 to zero. I save these as the upper curve. Uh, let me show it to y'all. Like such, like this. So this is the upper curve and from zero to 200, the negative, negative Z is gonna be the bottom curve like this. And I'm gonna explain that in a minute why I do that. Uh, I go on and do the same exact, exact same process for the symmetric airfall or, or tip airfall. Um, 
So this has a lot more points. Uh, this will be the upper uh, curve and the rest would be the bottom curve. So the, the result is that I have um, two sets of data for the root airfall and two sets of data for um, the bottom airfall, or uh, rather the tip airfall, uh, root airfall, tip airfall. So I go on to my uh, SolidWorks uh, window and I'm gonna create uh, a new part And I can start off with the curves. I choose curve through X, Y, and Z points, hit browse, and I go to my folder, which is called airfall coordinates. And I switch to text files. And then I choose whatever the root chord upper part is. There it is. Hit OK. This is a curve like that. And then I go do the same for the bottom portion. You see that they, so now I'm gonna explain why I do the, the dis distinction between the, the upper and the bottom. Uh, the reason why I do that is that um, I noticed that if I just export this as a single curve, when I loft the wing, I will not. I will not have this vertex, uh, and therefore there won't there won't be an edge um, that defines the the leading edge of the wing, and uh, that can be bad for you know some things further down in the process. For example, for uh, <clears throat> for CFD simulations, like you want to have that edge because. Um, both the leading and the trailing edges can be used can be used as like um, um, seeding regions for the mesh, and also for just the drawing process, like the design process in SolidWorks, it's useful it's useful to have those edges because they give you more um, uh, what I could call more control over. Uh, the sections of the wing. Um, so I'm going to go on and do the same for the tip airfall. Oh, this is bad. This doesn't look right. I'm going to go on and um, pause the recording and fix this because it doesn't really look right what I ha what I get. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I realized what my mistake was, uh, was that when I selected here, um, I was supposed to select for, for this airfall, uh, I was supposed to select from zero to, you know, the X coordinate from zero to 100 uh oops sorry from zero to 100 like this but i ended up including the the zero again um which led my data to be circular so i'm gonna go ahead and delete this save it and uh, let me just check the bottom curve as well bottom is fine so I'm gonna go on and do that again. I'm gonna delete this. Now it's fine. As such, so this is what I, we have now. We have the root curve and the tip curve. So what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create um, a sketch here. I'm just gonna change the direction here and I'm gonna convert 
these curves into sketch uh, entities like that. And now I can go on and <clears throat> close down this trailing edge. Uh, and something I'm going to do, I'm going to create a chord line from here to here. And I am going to create a dot, a point here that represents uh, the quarter chord, because that's the, the quarter chord is the point where the reference point by which we're going to align uh, the root and the tip airfoils. And then create a line that marks that. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the tip. I'm going to convert this tip curves. I'm going to close it down. And again, create a chord line as such. All right, so we can go ahead and hide these curves. And these are the sketch en entities for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for our wing. And now I'm going to create a plane that is parallel to the symmetry plane, uh, which is the top in this definition. And I am going to uh, put this plane to whatever offset distance that represents half of the wingspan, which was 650. Uh, now this is being created uh, to the positive Y direction. Uh, you could do that, um, but I don't know why it's just something, it's a habit of mine. I usually start the drawing with the left wing so I'm going to go ahead and flip this offset. Um, there's no reason behind it. It's just something that I do. So uh, yeah, this is the plane where we're going to copy uh, the tip airfoil sketch, just paste it here. And then we will be able to do a loft of the wing. So for that, we, uh, we're going to hit sketch here and we're going to copy this so just well ctrl c and now ctrl v and then you can use sketch tools and move entities so you pick a point and drag it uh, you can just paste it here and now uh, you can see that uh, let me mess up with it uh, this is an undefined sketch. So see, it's, it's kind of, it's crazy. Uh, there's no real form to it. So I'm going to do a control Z here. So what I need to do is actually define the dimensions of this, uh, just to avoid errors later on. So the chord is actually a hundred and this is actually whatever is here. And this, oops, this is the quarter chord location. And now we can drag this with no problems. As you can see, there's no problems with it. Uh, so we can put it coincident to this. And to make the airfalls aligned by their quarter chord, I simply choose this axis here and make it coincident collinear with this. And you can see that this sketch is fully defined right now. Press OK. 
and now we have enough to make a, a loft. So for that, we go to loft boss slash base. We're gonna choose our profiles, which is this one and this one. So you can see here that, you know, the preview looks fine and you hit okay. And this, um, ladies and gentlemen, is how you can loft a simple wing um, geometry in CAD. I can go ahead and hide this sketch that is not no longer being used. And you can see here that it is a linear transition between, between the first airfall and the second. And let's see if I can actually change the, if I can create a fillet because uh, realistically, when you manufacture a wing, you won't have uh, like a super fine uh, leading edge. Uh, actually, I mean trailing edge like this. Uh, usually you have some sort of fillet due to your manufacturing limitations. So I can go on here and I'm going to try to use this. Um, Let's try to use the constant fillet for now. I gotta put half a millimeter and I'm gonna choose this and that. And you can see that you can create a fillet which would be a more realistic geometry for uh, for a you know a 3D wing that is going to be manufactured later, so I can go on also and change this to um, a variable size fillet, and uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to use. I'm going to uh, actually. I'm going to choose both of those edges right there, and you see that uh, something pops up. Uh, basically how, we, how this works is you assign <clears throat> a, a radius size to each vertex in your geometry. So uh, I selected two edges, so four vertices in total. And uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna assign a radius that is like five thousandths of the chord dimension at that location. So the root chord is 200 millimeters. So I'm gonna uh, put one millimeter here and I'm gonna assign one millimeter to this. And hopefully it's gonna be able to generate, I'm gonna put 0 0.5 here and 0 0.5 here. And yeah, no success. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that the trimming edge is a square rather than, uh, than a perfect knife edge. So we can leave this out of the tutorial for now. And yep, yeah, this is it.